Ice Locked here with Nocturne Gaming, back with more Legends of Eidolon, and today we're taking a look at the Shaman Talent Build. A quick note before we get started, this is a higher level character and I may have more talent points than you do at this point. However, this guide focuses more on the priority of your talents more than completing the full build. But with all of that being said, let's get started and we're taking a look at tab one first. And your priority here should always start with Gilded Sword as this gives you a big boost to your damage dealt to all monsters. After that, it should be Sharpened Axe as this is one of the most important stats that you can get early game. After that, your next priority should be putting 50 points into Idle Casting. There is a diminishing returns for the skill, so when you get above 50 points, it really slows down, and at 100 points, you only actually get 17% AFK gain rate. So that should not be your priority after 50 points. From there, your next big talent priority will be getting overclocked energy, as this is one of the main sources that the Shaman gets its damage bonuses from. So we want to max this out as soon as we can. And the next is benefiting from overclocked energy, and that's your mana booster. And this scales up as you put more talent points into it, and you can see we get a pretty good bonus from this. Your next priority is choosing either between wanting more damage or wanting more agility, and the agility actually gives us accuracy for the mages. Uh, this is one of the most important stats early games, as if you don't have enough accuracy, all of your damage and stats are basically useless if you can't hit the mobs. So I do want to go ahead and max out my agility to show you how much accuracy we're getting for having the points in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and put my points into Book of the Wise. We will need to come back to this tab after we finish up tab three, uh, as there is some benefits that we can get more talent points in Book of the Wise. So with tab one done, let's move on to tab two. And this is where things get a little wonky, but we're going to start with our first priority will always be power overwhelming, as this increases the effect of weapon power has on your damage, allowing a quite a big boost to your damage now. Your second priority should be either knowledge is power for more effect from your wisdom, or an equal priority here is getting more mana from mana overdrive, as this gives you a percent increase to your mana and can really help scale that overclocked energy. So this is where things get a little convoluted here, and it's because there is a hidden stat uh, that is an AFK kill multiplier. So while you're offline, your active skills here can actually increase the amount of kills per hour that you have. This can be increased by up to 2.2 times. And the thing to note here is that energy overbolt, while it can help you kill faster, doesn't affect your AFK multiplier. So we really want to put a few points into energy bolt, but most of our points should be going into mini fireball here. And I usually put about 40 to 50 points in here to make sure I'm getting the, the big benefit from the kill multiplier. But back to our priority now, and the next big priority should be untwisted robes. There is a note to make here that if you have low stats on your equipment, your priority may be the individual insight first and then untwisted robes, but the scaling is really well on the untwisted robes, so we do want to make sure we're leveling this up as much as possible, especially the later you get in the game. After that would be your individual insight. And then from here, it starts becoming more optional, but there is one more damage bonus that we can get for idling, and that is chopping it easy. This gives you a small damage boost based on your minigame high score and chopping. Uh, the scaling is really bad, so I usually kind of keep this lower on 50 points or so, but if you have enough leftover talent points, it is worth maxing out. The other skill that's worth mentioning is your next, as this can increase your damage while you're actively playing online. If you're actively playing, you may want points into this, as well as more points into your energy bolt, as this can help increase your active gains. So let's move on to tab three now, and your first priority should always be Viral Vials, as this is the largest damage bonus that you can get for your Shaman, and this comes from an increase of damage based on how many Alchemy Vials you've leveled up. They need to be at least to the green level, which is, I believe, level four for each of your Vials. Let's go ahead and put points in here, and you can see how much our damage will scale from the points in Viral Vials. Your second priority should always be Wiz Wombo, as this gives you the chance to put more talent points into Book of the Wise on tab one. 
from here, your next big priority should be putting points into earlier education, as this can allow you to put a little bit more damage into tab two. And then from there, we're going to start getting a little wonky again, as our next priority should be our skills here. And these are again, active skills. There is an offline AFK multiplier for all three of these skills. However, the bigger multiplier comes from crazy concoctions. So if you're having to choose which of these to put them into, I would put it into crazy concoction first. But since we have enough points, we wanna kinda of spread these out a little bit. And so I recommend having about 20 points into each of these skills. After that, we have another special one, and that would be our next priority, which is Fantasia Flasks. And this allows you to have more levels based on your alchemy bubble mages best. And we can apply more levels into Farsight on tab one. Farsight gives you the chance to increase your crit chance as well as your crit damage. So it can be a nice multiplier for you if you wanna have points in this. However, make sure you don't level up this vial higher than what your alchemy vial is, otherwise it's a waste of talent points. One thing to note on here is if you have the spare resets to reset your talents, you can apply your points into this one time and then reset your talents. And that will allow you to, to maintain the boosted levels for Farsight here. So I'll go ahead and show you what that looks like now. We're gonna put 30 to 40 points in there because my vials is about 38 right now. And that will allow me to have an additional 33 talent points into Farsight. If I went ahead and reset my talents, this extra 33 would stay there. So our next choice really comes down to what utility that we really want as Shieldia Statue basically gives you no real big benefit to your, out, your Shaman's damage. However, you do get a small boost to your damage from Occult Obols based on how much wisdom you get from your Obols. At 100 points or so, this is only about 70% more wisdom from your oval specifically, so it's really not much of a gain. Personally, I think it's better to put your points into Cranium Cooking or Busy Brewing, as these can really help increase your alchemy gains while you're AFKing on your Shaman. The last talents that I do want to talk about is your Tent Eye Cycle, and this is only really beneficial if you're playing on an active Shaman, uh, but it does reduce your cooldowns by quite a lot, especially if you can get into the 155 to 160 range on the Tent Eye Cycle. So that pretty much wraps up our tab three, but we do have something to reassign in tab one, as we did put points into Wiz Wombo and uh, Fantasia Flasks. So we can go back to tab one and finish putting our points into the skills that we want. So we can level this up and get quite a bit more wisdom here. And then if you have these spare points to finish leveling up idle casting, if you have leftover points, you can throw them into either Farsight for more crit chance or crit damage, or Lucky Clover is a great way to help boost your drop rate or your EXP gains. The last one to mention is Fist of Rage, as this can boost your maximum HP as well as your crit damage. So the last section I wanna talk about is your star talents, and this is another way to get some gains here. Uh, the first thing you should do is put points into Will of the Eldest and the Best Beginner class. These are based on what your highest level characters are. Uh, most of my characters are just under 200, so I wanna put 20 points into each of these. If your characters aren't as high of a level, you want to use less points in this as it is capped based on your highest level characters. After that, I really recommend putting points into attacks on Simmer, as this can boost your AFK gain rates. From there, TikTok is another AFK gain rate boost, and it does scale quite nicely with your characters. From there, Goblet of Hemoglobin is a way to increase your survivability, as it does give you some small heals and reduces the amount of food that you need. There is one talent point that I don't have, and that's called Stonks, and it's from the Wellington quest line, but it does give you up to 48 more star talent points. So if you've completed that quest line, it is worth putting up to 30 points into Stonks. Otherwise, um, I would not put any more points into it. On to tab two, we do have Dungeonic Damage, and this is a very large increase to your damage, but it's based on how many dungeon credits you've ever earned. You don't need them actively in your inventory, but as long as you've earned the credits, you'll get the boost from it. After that is Frothy Malk to help give you more boost to your food. 
and from there everything else becomes pretty optional depending on where you're at in the game. I really like putting points into telekinetic storage for more carry capacity, and then I always put one point into printer sampling and shrine architect to allow me to put my shrines down. There is a few more good ones to mention, such as Just XP, as this gives you a good bonus to your class XP, and Pulsation can help you at earlier levels to help with your mana regeneration so you can use your active skills more often. Cardiovascular is also good to help increase your card drops, but it is optional. The last talent to really mention is called Mega Crit, and it's this talent right here in the bottom right, and it does give you an increase to your crit chance, as well as possibly uh, Mega Crits, which can help increase your damage if you can get over 100% crit chance. So a few quick tips before we wrap up. The first thing is to remember to always assign your attacks to your attack bar. If you're actively playing, the order that you assign these attacks do matter as the ability in the first slot will be used for the ability in the second slot and so on and so forth. But if you're AFKing offline, it doesn't matter so much. You just want to make sure you have all of your active abilities assigned to the task bar so that it can be used automatically. Um, make sure you're also grabbing your attacks from your special talents, such as your storage chest and your printer sampling and your shrines. And as a last quick tip, there is an easy way to reset your talent points if you accidentally place talents in the wrong spot or you want to try a different build. And that's by using the star talent reset potions. The fragments can be bought in the shops or they can be dropped from monster drops. So this will allow you to reset your talents and place them however you want again. You can also reset your star talents by using a star talent reset potion, which can be crafted in Anvil Tab 2 or can be bought from the gym shop. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you're enjoying this type of content. And a huge shout out to our Patreon members that support the work we do. Thank you from all of us here at Nocturne Gaming. If you would like to become a patron and get some added benefits, check out the link in the description. If you have any thoughts, comments, or questions, please leave them down below for me, and we'll see you next time.